Elise Okusami, aka Oceanator, is a singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and now record label owner. Although she was influenced as a youth by the 90s punk and garage scene, over the years, she's cultivated a sound that's all her own and can be heard on her first official full-length release, Things I've Never Said, which came out in late summer 2020 on her own imprint, Plastic Miracles. Let's go catch up with her now. I've always been curious about the creative process. I mean, what's that cosmic itch that absolutely must be scratched? And maybe even more than that, once they've started on that creative journey, what's the thing that helps someone take a project from the beginning to the finish? In this series, I'll be talking to industry professionals about their process, and I'll be asking them questions like, what's the best place to start? The best kind of equipment to use? What exactly does that button do? My name is Watson, and this is Making Noise. Elise, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. How you feeling? Uh, slightly optimistic. Slightly optimistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Overall. Uh -huh. So you're from Maryland, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's talk about um, your start musically. How did you, when did you start playing music? Um, I started playing music um, when I was like five. I started playing piano, but then I kind of, my teacher moved and uh, so I stopped. So I started playing guitar when I was nine and that's I guess when it like really took off more. Um, we had, my brother who's like 20 months younger than me is just a ridiculously, extremely talented musician who like has always been doing it. So like that, he was always doing it and my mom um, plays a little bit of piano and she sings and my dad's just like super into music. So it's always around. Um, but I didn't start really like taking it seriously, I guess, until like I was nine. I started playing guitar, and then I was like, "Oh, this is this is it. This is, I found it. Yeah, nice, the thing nice. I want to do." Yeah. It's awesome that you took. To say that is funny. Like, <laughs> I took it seriously at nine. You <laughs> I know. know what I, mean? I, as I was like, saying, and I was yeah. like, "This sounds weird." But, but that's yeah. that's dope, though. I mean, you're clearly met. You meant it. It was real. I mean, you're still doing it. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was. I just, I just love it, and you know, I, I, I got this. My neighbor brought over this Green Day CD, brought over Dookie, it had just come out. And, um, I was like, this is the most fun thing ever, and like learned to play those songs. And was just like, yeah, I just want to play guitar. Or you were playing piano first? Yeah, so I was playing, yeah, I got... At five, you said? At five, five mm -hmm. or six, I think, it was when I was playing piano. I want to say five because my brother was three when he sat down at the piano to play Moonlight Sonata by ear because it was on his lullaby tape and I had just figured out how to play Farajaka by ear right before he did this and I was like super proud of myself you know like Farajaka and then he was like wow. and just because like he heard it and so That's, he's like one of those but mm, uh it's incredible yeah but yeah my so like fast forward a couple years my neighbor brought over this Green Day CD Dookie and it just come out and uh, we put it on, actually, and my, my brother had a little CD player in his room, I remember. We put it on in his room because I didn't have one at the time. And uh, it was just like, this is the best thing I've ever heard. And I just started playing guitar too, so it was perfect because learning all those like power chords and stuff, you know, it was just like, it was a really good place to start, I think. Um, so yeah, that was kind of when I was like, yeah, this is, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So, but you started playing guitar like just before the, you heard Green Day, or was that it why was, you started playing guitar? I, uh, it wasn't why, I think it was just before, but it might have been just after. I'm a little fuzzy on, my, but I know that the first song I learned was Basket Case. Um, like the first actual song besides like, you know, Hot Cross Buns or whatever you learn. Um, but yeah, they definitely like influenced each other as things, I think like, it's what like kind of kept me excited about it for a little, like right in the beginning there, you know? Yeah, yeah. so at, when you started to take up the guitar, did you start with lessons or was it just by ear trying to figure it out? Um, I, I did, yeah, I started with lessons. So I did a little bit of both. Um, I started taking lessons on June 1st, 1995. Whoa. And, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> but uh, I had a really cool teacher who was really great at like, you know, letting, cause I was like a kid, you know, so he was like, good at teaching me things that like were good foundations but also being like oh you just want to learn this today like let's do that and like helping me 
like get better also at learning by ear. He was really good at. Mm. Um, so all these things just sort of reinforced each other so that you're able to just. Yeah. At this point, it just kind of comes out. Now you hear something in your head, you can more or less do it. Yeah. Pretty much on the, on the spot. Yeah, sometimes it takes like a second, but like, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty. I'm not like a perfect pitch. My brother's perfect pitch, so he's literally just like, will sit down and play it, right. you know, immediately. Like, uh, oh, it was so, I just gotta tell this annoying story about him. Yeah, go he, for it. You know that Stevie Wonder song that I can't remember the name of right now? But he's like, you can feel it all over. Oh, and yeah, then, yeah, Sir Duke. Yeah, 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 yeah there's yeah, that yeah. part where it's like, do, 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 do. So I remember he heard that. He was playing the bass along to it, and then he heard that, and he stopped, and he let that whole section go through and didn't play. Then he came back in, and then the next time the section came, he just hit every note. I was just so mad at him. That's awesome. You <laughs> literally heard it just that one time. Um, so I can't do that, but I can, like, I'll get it, you know. Yeah, you'll almost, figure it out. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So when did the Oceanator project start? Um, uh, 2015 or 16, I think, is when I started like calling it Oceanator. A lot of the songs, a couple of the songs had already been like, I had them, you know, I just wasn't doing anything because I was playing in a bunch of other bands and stuff. But I, yeah, I didn't start doing it as a project until 15 or 16, and then the first show was 16 or 17. I'm not sure exactly, I can't remember, but relatively recently, I guess, in terms of everything, but I, it's, you know, it's been like four or five years that I've been going on this specific project. Yeah. What, is there something that led you to do it as a kind of a solo project? Because you said you were playing in bands, but were you playing guitar in other bands? Yeah, I just, so I had all these songs and, and I, I wanted to play them and then I, decided instead of doing it like under my name, I would do it as like a band name because I wanted it to be like a full band. I didn't want it to just be like acoustic stuff, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I just, I started getting, calling up friends and being like, hey, here are my songs. Do you think you can play them with me for this show or like whatever? And just did that for a long time, had a very rotating cast of people, which was, Fun, but also really stressful, you know, having to to show people different stuff. But um, then it got cool because I got I had like a pretty solid group of people, and we would do different songs depending on who could do it. And mm -hmm. I had this one drummer, Aaron, who's really cool, and we did a couple shows just the two of us because he was really good at like filling space in a good way, mm -hmm. where like if I was playing some stuff that you that's just on the guitar and. Usually there'd be like all this stuff happening on the bass. He was really good at filling that space with the drums, but then mm -hmm. pulling back when he needed to, too. So I got to do a lot of fun experimenting stuff with that. Um, but now I've got a pretty solid like touring band crew who are the like the two that I almost always play with at this point. That's cool. So let's actually dig into that process of sort of songwriting and then leading into a live band. So. Um, so you write you write all the songs yourself, and I, you're a multi instrumentalist, so you can do all the parts. Yeah. Do you write it and record it first, and then like, okay, it just depends. Give it to them? How do you? No, it depends on the song. Usually, if I know that like, so for for if I know we're gonna be recording something, and I know who's gonna be recording it, I I usually don't write all the parts because I specifically ask those people to play because I like the way they play, you know. So what I'll do for those is usually, like I'll always write the guitar and I'll sometimes, for this last album I sent um, Andrew and Eva specifically, just like all the demos I had done, which were just in varying states. So some of them were just guitar and vocals and then some were like guitar with some drums in certain parts where, or some bass in certain parts. So I was like, I definitely want this here, but then like leave the rest of it open. And then we just kind of, get together and I'll be like, this is the vibe of this song, here's what I'm thinking, blah, 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 and then like let them do their thing. Do you, they cut you guys jam, jam out in the room and you just kind of hear what they're doing? And yeah, like, okay, that we did, good. Let's, yep, let's. we did like a one day rehearsal and then everyone went home for a week and then we came back in and recorded. Oh, that's tight. Um, yeah, that was super fun. Um, and then some songs, yeah, I'll write all the parts and then usually when I full on write all the parts, I'll just play them on the record too, because like, 
Yeah. If I already wrote it and know how yeah. I want it, I'll just do it, you know. Um, gotcha. And then, yeah, but for live, it's, uh, it's a similar process for live stuff, but I, I'm a little more, I feel like I do less when we're doing it live. Sometimes I'll just be like, it's in this key, here are the changes, like, hmm. just go for it. This gotcha. part, be quiet, this part, be loud or whatever. And usually people that I'm playing with, like, kind of, we, we get each other musically, so they kind of like, they can figure they out, figure out like, like yeah. yeah. And then once the song's like really solidified or, or recorded, or that's when I'll get, like if I have a new person playing, like Tony came in and to play on this last tour and uh, everything was already recorded. So they just learned them, learned them all. Gotcha. And then like threw their own little touches for it here and there, which is cool, but like, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. So when you're writing your songs, when you first have, well, how, how does it first start? When you're like, is it, does it start with a guitar and you're just, kind of jamming or do you have lyrics like how does your songwriting process tend to start it almost never starts with lyrics it usually starts either with yeah I'm just fiddling, fiddling around on the guitar and then I'm like oh this is a cool thing and build it out from there or I will like you know when you're in that good headspace where you're not thinking and then so something will just kind of pop up in my head and I'll be like oh I gotta go get my guitar right now so but that's also usually musical stuff musical stuff and yeah. occasionally like it'll be piano or drums or bass first you know I'll think of a thing and build around that mm -hmm. um, and then lyric wise sometimes it's like it'll just kind of be a stream of conscious while I'm, while I'm working on the new thing I'll just kind of a word or phrase or a couple things will pop up like because of the, the vibe the mood that the song is kind of telling me that it is but usually it's like I have to go back in later and write lyrics. Those are always the hardest for me. If, gotcha. You know, yeah. So is it in those cases when you're when you're kind of when you're really working on lyrics and sort of figuring that out? I imagine at that point you figured out, all right, this is what the melody is going to be. I'm going to have. Is it sort of like you sing maybe gibberish over it, just to kind of like, all right, I'm, I need vocals in these spaces. Yeah. And then you kind of record that, so you know where that is. Or you just already. I usually I usually don't record it. Uh -huh. It's just it's just in there. Um, but yeah, I definitely like, I'll have the melody and I'll just sing whatever mm -hmm. over it. And that sometimes also helps with the lyric writing yeah. itself because I'll start singing a thing that I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But yeah, usually like the, I'm trying to make the lyrics fit into the song musically and rhythmically as well as like mood wise, yeah. so, which is part of why I think they come last and they get changed a bunch. Cause like, and a lot of times like the grammar is just not right. <laughs> you know, the tense is not right because like, it sounds better. Um, so yeah, I guess. But yeah, in terms of recording stuff, that's also why the demos are usually so like sparse is a lot of times I just, I don't feel like recording it cause I, I hear it, you know, and I know what it is. And I'm just like, I don't want to set up this <laughs> face right now to do this. Like I know, I know it already. So I got to get better at that. I think just now that there's other people involved. Um, I wanted to talk about some of your other projects that you have going on. Kind of, you low key had a big year. Yeah. Right? New record, you started your record label this year, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me about when you actually decided to do it. What was the original concept of the, the record label? My main thing with it is like, I want to be putting out people's music that I just love, you know, that's like the main thing of it. Cause you know, the whole point of this label is not to be like a business so much as it is to be like a self-sustaining thing that can continue to put music out. So like, it's very much like, the, I'm not planning to make any sort of profit really off of it. Just any money that comes into it is just gonna go into putting out more things. So like, yeah, so I'm trying to get it to a point where like, I love this music and I want more people to hear it because I love it and maybe y'all will love it too. That's like one of my favorite things about music is sharing it with people. And, and then on the other end, like I had all these big grand plans. So like if there wasn't a pandemic happening, the big plans are like to do those community things and do these pop-ups. It would be like a weekend afternoon and we do this pop-up and there'd be like a couple, like three or four local labels tabling with all their stuff. And then there'd be people who like create like they make art or they like make clothes from scratch or whatever they do and then get a chef friend to come do their food and pop up we have bands playing and we can table for like some local organizations and stuff i wanted it to just be like this big community thing yeah, that yeah. we do like 
you know, every, every other month or something, whatever's sustainable for it, you know. That's amazing, I love that. It's a really cool concept. So, all right, you are multi-instrumentalist. <laughs> You're a solo artist as well. Starting a record label, got these big grand plans. <laughs> um, what is, uh, I'd love to ask you this question, this advice question, we can take it in two parts. So like, what would you say to someone who's just an, maybe a solo artist who wants to get into music about how to kind of approach it and then maybe a piece of advice to someone who wants to start a record label and help other artists? It's, kind of, it's a scary thing mm -hmm. to start with, to get up there and perform something you wrote and came out of like your heart and brain or whatever, you know? And, but once you start doing it, it gets easier and also you realize like how much you just love it. Um, so I think my advice is just like, do it. <laughs> like talk to your friends, see, go to shows when they're, when they exist again, or like show up at the live stream, and <laughs> chat with people and make some friends. And then like you, you do your thing together. That's another cool thing about this. I think is like, you see these like groups of people who have been doing this thing together for so long and figuring out together how it works. And then they're all coming up at the same time, you know? And I think it's really, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do it by yourself. You're gonna have your buddies there who are helping you do it no matter what. So I think in a very roundabout way, I'm gonna say do it, but also don't be afraid to like ask for help. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I guess, yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I, I love the new record. I actually got the vinyl. Um, oh, hell yeah. Can't wait for it to, to arrive, but. um. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to what else you do in the future. But thank you so much for- Yeah, this. thank you for having me. This is thank you, we'll see you. Yeah. See you later. And that's today's show. I'd like to thank Elise for joining us today. If you'd like to hear more of Oceanator's music, please check out the links in the description box below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. My name is Watson, and this is Making Noise. Peace. <laughs>